Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Andy's Shed Live. This uh, is uh, Season 6, Episode 5 for this Sunday, the 25th of August 2019. And um, if I'm looking a bit ruffled and a bit windswept, it's because I've been uh, doing a bit of welding this afternoon. I've been welding an old uh, car trailer this afternoon, so I'm a bit, uh, got a bit of welder suntan here today. Um, but yeah, we're back. Um, sorry we weren't around last week. It's been a couple of weeks since we were last here. And when I was here last time, um, I promised that one of the things that we would, uh, that we would do this time um, was going to be that we would uh, have a little look at connecting old vintage telephones together in the modern world and how we did it and one or two people got in touch with me and said oh yeah i'd be really interested in seeing how you do that so i'm going to try and explain it to you today as uh, as best i can um and it might not be terribly easy we'll uh, we'll do what we can do right so what we're talking about when we talk about vintage telephones well basically we are generally talking about um phones that are um dial phones that get in the sort of 1970s and up into the 1980s here in the uk here's one down here i'm in the process of restoring at the moment um so you've probably all seen a phone something like that and many of you I know have got them. This one is a uh, 706 from the uh, 1960s, this one dates from. In fact, this is a particularly early one. This one actually dates from 1960, this one. And that's why I'm in the process of restoring it at the minute, restoring the colour on it. You'll see it's that nice light ivory colour, but it had gone sort of yellow and suntanned. I'm, uh, in the process of lightening it and getting it back to the original colour at the moment. So you've got a load of phones like that. How can you use them in the modern day and age? I hear you ask. Well, one way to uh, do it is to connect them to something called CNET. And what CNET is, is it's a um, CNET is a decentralised um, system, if you like, um, and what it does is it replicates using VoIP, Voice Over Internet Protocol, uh, using VoIP phone calls, it replicates the old telephone system um, all over the world, but particularly here in the UK and also in America. Um, here in the UK it's set up particularly accurately to how um, old telephone systems used to be to the extent that we we have old telephone numbers that haven't existed. As you probably know every now and again your telephone number changes um, it certainly has here in the UK over the last uh, 20 or 30 years. They've changed a couple of times. Um, well, CNET uses vintage numbers. For instance, here I am uh, in the Chesterfield area code, which is now 01246. And that's the area code for here. But um, a few years ago, that changed and they put the one in. Previously, it was 0246. So, so CNET basically uses the old, the old area codes and things. Now I'm getting, I'm getting dropped frames on the stream here, so I'm just going to do something to try and improve the stream. Okay, hopefully that will improve the stream a bit. I've just disconnected something there. Actually, I've disconnected part of CNET, which I will explain a bit more about later. Um, but what you do when you connect to CNET, you are not connecting to the normal uh, system. So 
somebody on CNET can only through CNET call somebody else on CNET. Having said that though, there are a lot of people on CNET and uh, if you want to see how many people there are on there, you can just take a look at their website, which is here. Okay, right, this is the uh, the page you land on when you when you go to CNET's website. You can find this at www.cktsinfo CNET. Now, one of the problems with CNET is there is a, a file sharing and download site also called CNET. So there are two CNETs out there in the world, but this one is uh, cktsinfo and it will bring you here and it tells you a bit of the background about what cnet is it says in the fall of 2004 an email conversation began on the telephone collectors international mailing list several folk who had restored older pbx's and switching systems had begun to wonder now that voip over ip um, was beginning to be viable if there was a way to connect their switches together via the internet. Uh, someone mentioned the asterisk VoIP PBX and with a little experimentation the project took off with several of the switches creating asterisk switches and tandems to their switches. Now don't worry if you don't understand this it's it's all a bit complicated it all uses a, some technical terms when they're talking about switches and things like this but basically what they're talking about with switches they are talking about people who have got what are effectively old-fashioned telephone exchanges um, in their in their basement or in their shed outside or things like that old electromechanical exchanges strougers and things like that with all the wearing clanking bits and pieces that all move around and all the old electromechanical stuff that isn't used anymore but that is uh, basically what they're talking about there and it says since then we've built a private network that includes more than just electromechanical switches connected to asterisk pbx's so far we have older pbx's uh, and CO switches, key systems of various sorts and individual telephones. Now this is the bit you're probably going to be interested in, the individual telephone bit. Um, these are connected not only by asterisk VoIP but also by other VoIP PBXs, analog tandem adapters and VoIP telephones. We're going to be showing you how to do it uh, using an analog terminal adapter as it says here analog terminal adapter or an ATA and we're also going to be showing you how to do it with an asterisk server um, but this is CNET and if you want to see how many people there are on CNET this is freely available remember at cktsinfo on the web you'll see a thing here where it says a member list yeah and if you go on there and then it gives you all different parts of the world well we're in Europe at least we are for now um, so I click on Europe then and it says of phone numbers and what they are connected to and who they are connected to um, so there's a massive long list here if I go through this list you'll see these are all the UK numbers that are connected to CNET. So you see there are a lot of people who are who are connected to it. And I'm only sort of halfway down the list at this point, if I keep going. And this column here has the exchanges that are connected. Now the exchanges are important. Um, I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute. But if I go through the list, there you go. And I'll show you, um, I'll pick out one of my listings, one of the things that I've just disconnected a few minutes ago. Because basically I need the bandwidth for the live stream when I'm doing these live streams to YouTube. Um, right. 
Right, here we are. Right. So, if we look here, see this number here? It's 024687 is the, is the area code. 2001. Well, that is connected to Staveley Exchange. You got that? Can you see that there? Staveley Exchange, 024687. That means it's Staveley Exchange, and the number on Staveley Exchange is 2001, 2001. And it says, the description of what it is, is along party lines, and it says, it's a soundtrack of a Bell training film and it's available 24-7. That's because that's sat on a server here. Um, if you ring 2002, that's a joke told uh, by Edison, of all people. If you ring 2003, it's a soundtrack of the opening of the transatlantic telephone cable in 1956. 2004, it's a thing about direct distance dialing. And these are all pre-recorded things you can call from your vintage telephone if you are connected to CNET. Now, if you want to call actual people, there are actual telephones connected. These are all connected via a server um, to what are effectively MP3 files. But here I am, look, 024682, and then 3814, and it's me, Andy Cooper. And it says, connected to a Grand Stream 502, um, termination on a trunk, on a BT Revelation PABX. Um, and that's connected there so that will actually call me if you ring that number that calls me and that is actually still connected at the minute so if you're on CNET if you ring 0246 823814 now do it now <laughs> um, that will uh, that will actually call me and you'll come through live onto the show here so there are a couple of ways of getting on CNET, of getting on that list. There are two ways of connecting up to it. One involves running your own CNET server, which is effectively a telephone exchange. So I'm running the exchange for Staveley, and I'm also running one for a place called Clown, Clown with an E on the end of it, which is just down the road from here, as is Staveley. Um, I'm running those, and they sit on a little um, server box that's hidden just behind here. I don't even know if I can pick it up. I'll, I'll try and pick it up. But there's the thing. That is the CNET server. Now that is actually an old HP thin client. Um, it's nothing more complicated than that. It's a, it's a HP thin client. Um, and... I think it cost me about 20 quid off of eBay, second hand. Um, so it's as simple as that if you want to run a server. But running a server is a little bit more complicated. What most people do when they want to get connected up to CNET, they start with one of these. This is one of those analog terminal adapters um, that was mentioned on the... Uh, CNET web page for getting connected. This is a thing called an ATA, an analog terminal adapter. This particular one is made by Linksys. They're not around anymore. I think they've been bought out and taken over. But you can still buy these. You can get these off eBay now. I think basically they're, they're now made in China. It's a kind of Chinese knockoff thing, but they work. You can get them off eBay now for about £15 off eBay. Uh, it's a Linksys PAP2T uh, analog terminal adapter. And the way these things work is you connect them to the internet um, because on the back of them you will see there is a port to connect to your internet route. And there are two ports to actually connect phones to. Now these ports on here have got the American type um, 
sockets on them. But what you do is you get an adapter. And I can show you one of these adapters if I just uh, grab one here. This is the adapter. So the end here will fit a normal UK telephone um, plug. You know, the plug on the end of a normal UK phone will fit in there. But on this end, it's the American version. So you just plug that into there. And I can do it. Wrong way up. And like that. So that then converts it to the UK plug. So that's how you connect your phone. So you can connect two phones to this. You can have two telephone numbers set up on this. Um, and then you connect it to your router as well. Then you have to set up the software inside this. Um, and then you're connected to CNET. But setting up the software in this thing is uh, is really quite simple. And uh, it will connect you to CNET. But if you connect by one of these, you have to go to through CNET Exchange. You have to go through a server like that box that sat behind me there. So, where is the server? If you only have one of these, if you don't have the server, where is the server? Well, the simple answer to that one is wherever you want it to be these boxes a bit like web hosting these have to be hosted somewhere on a server now i've got my own server to host these boxes um, but you can just have the box and be hosted remotely by somebody else and i'll show you how that works in just a minute I've just unplugged something here, so I want to plug it back in again before I completely lose track of what I've unplugged and what I haven't. And that's that back in. Right, let's show you um, the way it works. So, if I show you this picture. So here you'll see top left is your wall socket okay and your wall socket in this case has got an internet connection which is shown in yellow that's on the left that goes to your router and then the orange thing with a red with a red glow to it on the right hand side coming out of the wall socket an ordinary telephone line okay that's an ordinary an ordinary what they call pops plain old telephone um, a pox line so your normal BT line or whatever and in my case that goes into a box called a PBX um, and a PBX is basically a mini telephone exchange um, that sits here so I can connect lots of phones all around the house to this box. So what's happening there, if you follow that red highlighted thing, a normal phone call is coming in, and it's coming in to one of three inputs to that PBX box. And then it will ring out on all of those telephones across the bottom that, that are connected in green, that are all over my house, right? So it's just showing it ringing out on one of them there. Um, but it could uh, ring out on uh, on any of them. It could uh, it could ring out on that one. Um, it could equally ring out on that one okay or any of the others there now if i want to receive or make a cnet call the way that works is by routing a call like this 
So it goes from your wall socket by your internet line this time into your router then out one of the ports of your router, there's normally four ports on, on most routers, out one of your router um, ports, the same that you would connect to your computers or your smart TVs or whatever to, out one of those to the ATA. Then remember the ATA has got what are effectively two phone lines connected to it, or two telephones connected to it. So instead of connecting it direct to a telephone which you can do connect those you can connect either of those two orange things coming out that ata to a telephone instead of connecting it to a telephone i've got it going into the pbx so it's two more lines of the three lines available on that pbx and then in that case it's going out to the second phone along the uh, along the thing there but it could equally go out to that phone, the fourth phone along there, or any of the others that are marked in green. And similarly, if you want to make a call, it goes the other way. You pick up one of the phones at the bottom, and you dial a code into the PBX, and the PBX then will decide from the code you've dialed whether you want to go straight out over that uh, top orange connection which is your ordinary telephone system so if you want to make an ordinary telephone call in my case i dial nine and it would go out over that uh, over that top thing so it would go somehow uh like that um and that would completely bypass cnet that would be an ordinary telephone call going out in the ordinary telephone network but if I wanted to um, go via CNET, it would be something like that. So it would go from the PBX. Instead of dialing 9 into the PBX, I dial, in my case here, 72 is the way I do it here. And then that routes you through either of the two lines going into the ATA, which then routes through your router and then out through the internet. Now, what I said was that this little box, this thing, has to be um, hosted somewhere. If you, if you have not a normal VoIP service, like Vonage or something like that, you know, you pay somebody somewhere to host your little ATA on the system you'd like pay to have a line into their exchange in the virtual world it's like having a line into my server back there well with CNET you have to get somebody to host you so you might say to me Andy will you host me on uh, on CNET will you host my TA and in which case then I send you details that you put into this box that you program this box with that will connect it to my server here my exchange my stavely exchange let's say here so when you make a call into cnet your call goes um, from your telephone into this box from this box into your router from the router then it goes out through the internet and comes to my Stavely Exchange server here. My Stavely Exchange server looks up the number that you've rung, that you've dialed in on your phone, and says, oh, that's so-and-so, that's Joe Bloggs in I don't know where. Um, and then it routes the call back out um, from my server and back over to another somewhere else let's say Manchester somebody sat in Manchester with a server like that behind them so it routes to Manchester and then it goes to the server at Manchester the call the server at Manchester looks at the number you've dialed and gone yeah that's a Manchester number looks at the last few digits the local digits on the end of the number and goes yeah i know who that is that's so and so that's uh, that's joe bloggs who lives down the street i'll connect you now and then it connects via the internet to joe bloggs who's also got an ata 
And here's ATA then, because it's connected to a telephone, makes a telephone ring. So it's as simple as that it goes. Telephone to ATA. ATA out over the internet via your router and whatnot. Um, to a CNET server or a CNET exchange. From that CNET exchange, it goes to the CNET exchange you are calling. You may be calling somebody on the same exchange, like a local call. You may be calling somebody on a different one. Chances are you'll be calling somebody on a different one. So it goes then to that other exchange. That other exchange, and remember it's doing all this through the internet, then looks up who on that exchange you are calling, who's got an ATA, and it goes to their ATA via the internet, then out of the ATA and to their telephone. I've made that sound a lot more complicated than it actually is. You don't need much knowledge to use one of these. There is just one caveat. Some ATAs don't accept pulse dialing. They only accept DTMF, tone dialing. This Linksys ATA only accepts DTMF. It will not work with a pulse dialing telephone. If you've got a pulse dialing telephone, you need a different sort of ATA. Ideally, a Grandstream one, a Grandstream 502, a Grandstream 702, a Grandstream 701, which is like a 702, but it's only got one phone port on it, not two. Um, Grandstream ones will work with pulse dialing. The, they're a bit more expensive to buy, generally. These ones don't, these Linksys ones. There are other types you can get as well. Here's another one. This one is uh, a Cisco one that I got cheap off the internet a while back. Um, I think it cost me about a 10 or something like that. And it's another one that I've just got in reserve that we can probably set up and use. Um, but I'm just not using it like I'm not using that one at the minute because I tend to buy these things when they're cheap just in case anybody wants to connect to CNET through me and I can say, yeah, I've got an ATA, uh, you can have... Um, and then we can get unconnected. So that's how it works. If you want to do pulse dialing, though, you have to have the right ATA. You have to have an ATA that accepts pulse dialing. And the ATA is made by a company called Grandstream Do. The PAP 2s, the Linksys PAP 2Ts, and the Cisco ones don't. But you can still connect your phone to them because I'm going through that PABX, remember? Um, I'm going through that grey box there. And what does that grey box do, or have the ability to do if you set it? Well, that grey box has the ability to make any outgoing call uh, tone dialing. So even though the telephones at the bottom of that may be old pulse dialing dial phones, when it comes out of the PBX and into the ATA, it's converted those to tones. So in that setup, if you've got that PBX, you can use any ATA with pulse, with pulse dialing phones. Even the cheap ATAs like the Linksys one that only work on DTMF. But if you're connecting a phone directly to your ATA, which most people, I guess, will, then you've not got that PBX in there, so you're connecting direct from the ATA to the phone, you've got to have an ATA. If you want to use um, a phone with a dial that works on pulses, you've got to have a pulse dialing compatible ATA. Okay? So... How does it work for me? Well, I've got the ATA and the server here. So I don't have to connect across the internet to somebody else with a server, to, which is like my local exchange, and then go to the local exchange of the person I'm calling. Because my ATA connects to the local exchange, but it doesn't have to go across the internet to do it. Because it's sat right here, so it only has to go as far as my um, router. So it goes, my call goes telephone, ATA, router, 
then it realizes ah it's trying to connect to it's trying to connect to that server but that server's here so it doesn't go out of the internet it goes straight back from the router straight to um, that uh, that CNET server so that is basically how it works um, it uh, I could have explained it better maybe but if you want to know more about it get in touch with me get on the website andyshed.callpress.net um, and uh, if you get on the website there, there's the address um, you'll find a contact us page get in touch with me via the contact us page there uh, and then what that basically does is it emails but it shields my email from the from the web so I don't get loads of spam um, so if you contact me through the uh, through the contact us page initially on there then I can get back to you and I can explain more about how it works but if you want to get connected to CNET you can run your own server um, you have to get in touch with the chap here in the UK who um, who basically oversees CNET and uh, and he makes sure that two people haven't got the same numbers and stuff like that. Um, but generally, to get started, all you need is an ATA. And if you get an ATA, all you've got to have then is somebody to host your number. And that can be anybody on CNET who has got a server. Who, who is effectively being a telephone exchange. The servers are effectively telephone exchanges. So that can be anybody on that list there who is running one of these servers. Now you'll see that I've got Stavely there, um, but I've also got Clown up here that you'll, that you'll see there. And you see it's the old telephone numbers. It's not modern numbers because, as I said, Chesterfield Exchange here, look, is now 01246. But on here, it's 0246. So that is how it works. And, of course, it's not just in the UK. This is a massive long list of UK numbers. Um... But there are uh, numbers all over the place. Uh, North America, for instance. Here's a list of everything connected in North America. And this is a massive list. I will, I will scroll through it for you. Just so you can see how many things there are and some of these actually connect to real people and some of them are connected to recordings um, some of them are connected to things like weather stations so you can ring some of them up and there'll be an, like an automatic weather station that will talk to you and tell you what the weather's doing in a given place but there are loads and loads and loads of them I'm a quarter of the way through this list at the moment and I'm still scrolling as you can see, I'm not going to go all, well, I will go all the way through. I'll go right down to the bottom, but it's a mega, mega long list, as you can see. So there's a lot of people all across the world connected to CNET. This is just North America that I'm showing you here. There. But there's all sorts of things you can dial, fun, pre, fun recordings and, and all that kind of thing that you can dial on it. Once you get that ATA, so all you basically need, assuming you've already got an internet connection and a router, uh, all you need to get yourself uh, connected to CNET um, is an ATA. Um, if you're wanting to connect a Pulse dial-in phone, get a Pulse compatible ATA. Generally, get a Grandstream one because we know they work. Um, if you're not bothered, if you're wanting to connect a fairly modern phone, you know, one that dials in tones or those beep, 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 when you dial it, um, then uh, one of these cheap 15 quid PAP2s off of eBay 
and you're good to go. All you need to do is get somebody to host you. Give me a call if you want, if you want hosting, and um, we'll see what we can do. The thing is, because I've got uh, Stavely and Clown um, on this server, you would get a Stavely or Clown number. So you would get a number that begins 0246. Um, 0246 um, 87 for Stavely or 0246 81 for Clown, I think it is. Um, because they're like sub um, sub exchanges off of Chesterfield. Um, so yeah, that is how CNET works. I hope I've uh, explained it okay uh, to you. As I said before, though, if you want any more information, get in touch with us on the website or through the website andyshed.callpress.net. Or, of course, if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching on the bright, shiny new library as well now, um, leave us a comment below. You can now comment on library just like you can comment on YouTube. So, uh, yeah do that if you can um before i go the normal plea please like and subscribe uh, whether you're on library or on youtube or wherever you are like and subscribe the video please if you've really enjoyed it on library also why not drop us a library credit or two um because not only does it help me out it also helps uh, publicize the video when when i get library credits it helps the video get publicized so more people will see it um if you're on there um remember lbry.com if you want to find out more about library or watch my video go to andy's shed and uh, look for my uh, video that we did a while back about how to use library Okay, because library is supposed to be the YouTube killer, and my god, YouTube could do with being bumped off at the moment. The people that run YouTube at Google are not being very helpful to content creators like me. You'll see a lot of content creators saying that they're quitting YouTube and going on to other platforms at the moment, um, and there is very good reason for that. So, as I say, like and subscribe. We're trying to get over a thousand subscribers on YouTube because this, this channel used to make me a little bit of money. Um, um, but as of uh, about 18 months ago, YouTube decided that if you've got less than a thousand subscribers, which I have got, I've got just under 600 subscribers at the minute, I think. If you've got less than 1,000 subscribers, they said they weren't going to let you run ads on your videos anymore, and hence you weren't going to get any revenue anymore. So I've got to get up to 1,000 a, a subscribers, and also I've got to get the watch time up to something like... Um, what is it? Is it 4,000 hours of... A year of watch time or something like that. I can't remember what the number is exactly now. But basically, we want you to watch as much as possible. So, if you're one of those people that leaves the computer on for any length of time, for whatever reason it may be, or if you're watching this on a smart TV and you tend to leave your smart TV on in the background, please leave it playing one of our playlists on YouTube. If it, This is if you're on the YouTube platform. Leave it playing one of our playlists. So, it, plays all my videos even if you're not watching it if it's overnight and you leave it um just leave it playing my videos overnight to get the hours up it really really helps because we have to get the hours up we have to get a thousand subscribers and, and also get the hours up um we have to get something like twenty thousand watch minutes a month i think it is um so that's twenty thousand people watching for one minute a month or it's um, one person watching for 20,000 minutes a month. So if you can leave your comments on YouTube thinks you're watching, even if you're out doing the gardening or something, YouTube thinks you're watching. So if you can leave it on, play one of my videos, or if you're in a coffee shop somewhere, or, or if you're anywhere with a free computer, leave it on, play one of my YouTube videos, please. Um, it really helps. It doesn't cost you a penny, but it really, really helps. Um, so if you can do that, that would be ace. 
And that about wraps it up for this week for Andy's Shed Live. Um, next week, we hope to be here maybe a little bit late. So check in at 6.30, but if I'm not here, don't be terribly surprised. Because it's Heeds Windmills Autumn Tractor Day next week, next Sunday. I'll be there with the stationary engine. Um, if you want to come along, feel free to come along and join us and support uh, the wonderful heritage that is Heeds Windmill. Um, it's uh, in Derbyshire, in the, in the heart of Derbyshire. Um, not far off the A6 and the A610 road. Um, little village of Heeds. A beautiful old windmill, fully restored. We'll probably be working on the day, provided there's a bit of wind there. You can even buy proper windmill ground flour there if you want to make some proper bread. So that's Heeds Windmill and their event, their autumn track today that we will be at next Sunday. Um, but for me for now, I hope you've enjoyed the, this episode of Andy's Shed Live. As I said before, remember, like and subscribe if you can, please. And uh, I'll see you next time. But for me, for now, bye.